There's one character, the porcupine, that used his engineering skill to make a suit dressed like a giant porcupine. And, and I've worked with many engineers and hardly any of them dressed like giant porcupines. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a better robot for any student project. Check it out at SOLIDWORKS.COM robotics. Hi, this is John Hayes from Engineering.com and I'm here at the USA Science and Engineering Festival with jo Dr. Jim Kekalius, physics professor from the University of Minnesota and author of multiple books and YouTube star with his uh, Science of Superheroes, Debunking of Popular Myths, Dr. Kekalius, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Now, I've got so many questions to ask uh, Dr. Kekalius, um, but the very first thing I just have to ask is, when it comes to comic books and the movies, are there any stories that actually get the science right? Uh, actually, yes, uh, quite a bit. The filmmakers have become very sophisticated and realize that the audiences are also sophisticated. So while superpowers themselves are physically impossible, uh, spoiler alert, the uh, frequently what the characters do with their powers is physically realistic. And they do this deliberately in the movies because they don't, they know that the audience will sense when something is too much of a special effect and it will take them out of the movie. One of the best movies that portrays engineers, in fact, is the 2008 film Iron Man, where we see Tony Stark uh, build a suit of armor that has offensive and defensive capabilities. There's only one impossible thing in the movie, one miracle exemption from the laws of nature, was Tony Stark's power supply, his arc reactor, mm. that he generates a little uh, power source that's about the size of a hockey puck that puts out the power of three nuclear power plants. Mm. And if you uh, buy into that, everything else is kind of okay. We see at one point Tony Stark back in his laboratory after he, building a new version of the Iron Man suit and he's doing some soldering. He's using the same soldering iron that I have in my laboratory and he's doing it right. Uh, I was probably the only person who got excited at Iron Man for the soldering. Iron Man was great because it showed the engineer as superhero and the superhero as an engineer. At every key moment in the film, Tony Stark outthinks his opponents. And uh, so it shows, like the good comic books, a premium on intelligence. Fantastic. Dr. Kikalis, I would like to ask you about comic books, because that is really where so much of uh, our audience has heard of you before. Can you give us a story or two of examples in comic book lore where the physics just fundamentally doesn't work, never could work, it's just flat out impossible. Right. Well, um, in my book, The Physics of Superheroes, I actually focus more on those cases where they get the superheroes would get their science right. Uh, what I do is I grant each character a one-time miracle exemption from the laws of nature and say, well, if you were super strong or could stretch like a rubber band or could run at super speed like the Flash, could you run across the ocean, catch bullets in midair, drag people behind you in your wake? all things the character is shown doing, all things that are correct from a physics point of view once you make that suspension of disbelief. Nevertheless, there are definitely cases where the characters will get things wrong even with a, a suspension of disbelief, a miracle exemption from the laws of nature. Um, one of the most egregious examples involves Superman from the 60s. Every time he'd pick up an ocean liner or a jet plane or an office building, you know, Buildings aren't meant to be picked up. You know, even if you, even if they're like the structures apparently in Metropolis that have just flat black uh, foundations and apparently aren't connected to any city water or power, and the, the, the structure would crumble under its own weight. And, it, and because it's just not intended to be lifted at a single point, even if you lifted it under the center of mass. And so, Rather than bringing the building to where he's going, he should be just holding a couple of cinder blocks and some piping. And you can always tell where Superman's been by the trail of construction material he leaves behind. <laughs> Thanks very much for well, your participation and for you your leadership. Much. Thank you very much for your kind words. Thank you. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a better robot for any student project. 
Check it out at SolidWorks.com robotics.